Hello, my name is Pilar Treyes. I am a child and adolescent psychiatrist and assistant professor of psychiatry at the Seaver Autism Center. I also lead a psychiatric clinic for children and adults with neurodevelopmental disabilities at Mount Sinai West Hospital, where our role in treatment centers in medication management of behavioral symptoms associated with autism and other neurodevelopmental disorders. We have divided this primer on the role of medications in autism in two short videos that I would like to encourage you to watch in order. In the first video, I will give you an introduction to the role of medications in ASD. That is to say, what medications can help with and what they cannot help with. I will also talk broadly about clinical trials in autism as they shaped the way physicians in the field approach treatment and how we define targets. In our second video, I will specifically talk about the most common medications used in ASD under specific indications. I hope you find this series helpful. As you are aware, autism spectrum disorder is a behaviorally defined condition that is comprised of two sets of symptoms, deficits in social communication and repetitive and restrictive behaviors. These two set of symptoms is what we define as the core symptoms of autism. To date, there are no efficacious treatment for pharmacological treatments for this set of symptoms. For example, we do not have medicines that increase language and nonverbal communication. Behavioral interventions are still the cornerstone of treatment in autism. Nonetheless, medication can often have a role in the treatment of autism. As we use medicines to help individuals who do not have autism with symptoms as depression and anxiety that affect their quality of life, we use the same medicines in autism to treat commonly associated symptoms that often get in the way of their progress. It is important to treat these symptoms as they tend to cause significant impairment. Very often we hear from families that it is not the autism itself that interferes with daily life, but these associated symptoms. For example, we can treat a child's low frustration tolerance, reactive aggression, or self-injurious behaviors. When it is relevant, treating these associated symptoms can lead to impactful and positive changes. Now, as we talk about medications for autism, it is important to keep in mind some of the limitations researchers in the field have encountered when trying to identify pharmacological treatments. Learning about clinical trials in the field will help us learn about them and how they impact clinician decision-making when choosing medicines. Researchers use clinical trials to identify treatments for a particular condition. Simply said, they select a population as similar or homogeneous as possible, test the medicine, and then see if it works. If it helps most people in the population, we said that the trial was positive. This is important for clinical trials in autism spectrum disorder, as it is a very heterogeneous condition. This means that although individuals with autism all have the same two sets of symptoms, this can present or look differently behaviorally and have different biological origins. Researchers in autism make efforts to identify similar groups of individuals with ASD. However, even with our best technology, we continue to encounter limitations. For this reason, we have very few medicines that we say can help children with autism broadly, which has translated to only two medications that have an FDA indication in autism. This doesn't mean that we only have two medicines to treat symptoms in autism. Importantly, even when a trial in ASD has been negative, there might have been a few participants that did benefit from the treatment. It is very important that we keep this in mind as we survey psychotropic medications in clinical practice. Researchers are making efforts to overcome these limitations, some of which you can learn in our videos about genetics and biomarkers. In the meantime, we have identified a specific target symptoms that might respond to medication, such as irritability, aggression, sleep, anxiety, or ADHD symptoms, to name a few. You can learn more about these medications in our second video.